Follow along as we fill out a scorecard on Nectar for the Gods number four potting soil. I'm Matt. And I'm Chris of My Soil. Follow us along as we fill out a scorecard, evaluate its overall score and best usage. As a consumer, the very first thing that I'm going to look at is price. Now, to level the playing field, we're looking at price per cubic foot of potting soil. And the Nectar for the Gods number four came in at $12.25 per cubic foot where we purchased it here locally. And looking at our price and score chart, that puts us right at about a score of seven for Nectar for the Gods. So that's a really high score um, or a relatively low cost for this, this manufactured potting mix. The next thing that we're going to do as a consumer is we're going to open that bag and get hit with that smell. Yeah, um, you know, when I, when I opened the bag and uh, smelled it, it was, you know, pretty neutral from what I remember. A little bit earthy, um, not off-putting. Yeah, I think I remember that too. And as I look at it, I see a lot of the perlite. But to me, that's a very peat forward yeah. uh, smell. It is certainly earthy. Um, it doesn't have that richness like soil after a rain that I would hope for, but gosh, certainly it smells good. And it's right. not, like you said, there's no bad odors here. Um, I'd be happy to have that uh, in a potted plant or something. That's probably a seven for me. I, where were you? Yeah, I ranked the smell on this one at a nine just because it wasn't off-putting. You want to meet in the middle on this one? I certainly think it's a good smell too. I could bump up to an eight pretty easily. And I could come down to an eight, so I think that's... All right. Yeah, and that's the subjective nature of these reviews. We're all gonna smell it just a little different, but overall, yeah, a pretty good smell to this one. Yeah. You know, I think as equally important to smell, and it's what our next, next metric is, is gonna really be the, uh, the look and the feel um, of this soil. And some people prefer something that's really dark and rich, other like the perlite look. We're gonna try to strike a balance with our, with our look and feel here. So Chris, where are you at? Uh, you know, on this soil, very fine textured for the, the larger component of it, but um, also some very large um, particles of perlite. Mm -hmm. So it's very fine and then you have very large um, perlite particles um, in there. So um, texture wise, you know, not, not very woody, more of that peat cocoa, very fine peat cocoa mm -hmm. uh, mix with big, big uh, pieces of perlite. Okay. Yeah. And that's something that I noticed too. And one thing that, I know you mentioned it, there's not a lot of large woody debris or large wood chunks in there, which I prefer. Right. Um, one of the things I noticed as I was packing this container is that it had a really good medium density, that it took water really well, the soil never crusted. Um, and so I really appreciated the look and the feel as I was adding it to the container. And so I scored this one maybe a little higher than some others because of how well it, it did um, for, for for this uh, container. Um, so I landed right at a, at a seven um, for look and peel, even though there was a lot of that larger perlite there. Yeah, it looks like, uh, you know, I landed at a six on this one and, you know, just seeing the perlite really come to the surface and, and change the look of us. So I'm looking for maybe more of a natural soil look. Uh, the perlite really came to the surface as, as we watered, mm -hmm. um, but it did have good density and watered well. So, um, can we meet in the middle there? Sure, um, six and a half it is. All right. So we're at a seven for price, an eight for smell, and a six and a half for look and feel. Um, now let's go ahead and look at the MySoil data that we got when we first um, first loaded this container up. Um, when we looked at the nutrient density score, uh, that popped in right at 60%. We were a little bit low in nitrogen. We were also pretty low in pretty much all the micronutrients um, as well as magnesium, um, a macronutrient. So relatively low on nutrient levels. Um, I think it's worth mentioning that this is 100% um, organic potting mix, so no uh, non-organics in there. And mycorrhiza is added, so that's gonna boost potentially uh, nutrient uptake um, as those mycorrhiza work with the plant roots to, uh, to extract nutrients. But overall, said and done, I landed right at a six and kind of stuck with kind of what the nutrient density score told me here. Yeah, in my evaluation, um, you know, with a little low on nitrogen, um, you know, the micros, pH was good. Um, just looked like there's some room for improvement there um, in amending this soil. So as a standalone soil, I came in at a six as well. Okay, so we agree here that our uh, nutrient levels, we're gonna be at a six. Um, I think as we move into Will It Grow, maybe I'll let you take the lead and look at some of the nutrient deficiency symptoms we're seeing here. 
Yeah, so I think we kind of predicted this, you know, with the test, you know, prior to uh, planting. Um, and we're, we're definitely seeing these deficiencies that we picked up on the test. So we can see, you know, nitrogen deficiencies in our lower leaves here. Um, that's because the plants move in those up to, to the newer growth. So uh, we are experiencing some of these deficiencies. We didn't really see these deficiencies early on, mm -hmm. but as the plants matured and, um, and progressed through their life cycle, we started really experiencing these deficiencies. Um, you can also see that in the lettuce. It's kind of stayed uh, small um, as it's progressed through its life cycle as well. So um, I don't know what your thoughts are as far as, um, you know, how you know, will it grow? Um, I gave this one a five. You know, for the same reasons as you, I gave this one a five. Like you mentioned, I saw the nutrient deficiency. Um, one thing I thought was impressive is that the growth between the lettuce and between the tomatoes was really consistent plant to plant. So I did appreciate that, but we just didn't get a lot of the plant and we didn't have as good a plant health as we could have. Like Chris said, a little bit of an amendment um, with, with nitrogen, magnesium, maybe some micronutrients and we'd have robust and healthy plants right now. But as a standalone, um, I had it right there um, at a five. All right, and so that's gonna lead us to an overall rating. All I'm gonna do is add all these up and divide by five. We're gonna run just a straight average. And as we run that straight average, this is gonna come out to uh, 6.5. Um, so a good starting point for, a, for a bulking an existing bed or a container, as I start to think of best uses. Um, how else might you use this outside of just bulking a bed or starting a container? Yeah, I think really as a seed start, like I said, um, these plants as they were young um, looked very good, um, had good rooting. It just, as they matured, they ran out of, ran out of nutrient, the soil couldn't supply it. So as a seed start, um, a bulking a bed, as you said, or adding to a native soil Absolutely. to increase organic matter or sandy soil, I think are um, great uses of this type of soil, um, just knowing that it's gonna need some amendments. So. Yeah. I would agree and I just would like to reiterate that I think that price point was a really solid price point with just some amending needed um, to get your plants to be as healthy and nutrient dense um, as possible. All right, now that we've covered that overall rating as well as the best use, that's a wrap on today's video. Please comment below if there's other products that you'd like to see. If you enjoyed this, go ahead and hit like. Um, of course, we'd love to have you as a, as a subscriber and we'd love to see you hit that bell so that you get notified when our other product review videos come out. Thanks again for following along. I'm Matt, this is Chris, and we'll see you again soon in the lab.